Good morning, St. Luke. Welcome to worship uh, here at St. Luke United Methodist Church. We're glad that you're tuning in today, uh, and we hope that you enjoy today's broadcast of our traditional worship service. Uh, we do welcome you in the spirit of Jesus. I'm coming to you today, actually the Wednesday before the Sunday that we're going to worship together. I'm here at the food pantry, which is in our church gym. Uh, we're glad um, uh, to have this food pantry ministry, it's something that we do twice a month, the second and fourth Wednesday of the month, and it goes from 4.30 until 5.30. Uh, people come to receive food from this pantry free of charge, and we're always looking for people to help us with the pantry as well. And so uh, if you do wish to volunteer, we hope uh, that you will consider volunteering for our pantry. We're able to reach multitudes of people through this ministry. Today, um, I want to focus on how it is that God uses the church uh, in order to show that he is with us. He does that through this food pantry ministry, uh, and I believe that he does that uh, as we share together. In fact, uh, we're going to uh, get to sing some Christmas hymns today. We're doing a Christmas-themed Sunday here in the middle of July. And so, uh, yeah, we hope that you'll tune in and get ready to sing some Oh Come All Ye Faithful here in just a minute uh, along with us as, uh, as we sing together. Uh, join us for the service. Uh, we hope you enjoy. And Good morning, and, and uh, Merry Christmas in July, Merry Christmas. Hey, do you guys watch the Hallmark Channel on, uh, on TV? No. Yeah, I got some Hallmark no. Channel fans. 
All right, they do this thing. I don't know if this is yearly, but they're doing it right now. It's called Christmas in July. Okay, so there were several people who said, hey, we should do a Christmas Sunday in July. Marilyn's uh, flagging me. She's like, this was me. I did this. Okay, and so we said, hey, why don't we do a Christmas-themed Sunday in the middle of July, even though it's only like 158 days until Christmas? We can go ahead and start the countdown now. And so that's what we're doing today. If you've already looked at your bulletin, then you'll see we're playing Christmas hymns today. I'm going to talk about uh, Jesus being born in a stable today. It's it's all good. That's what, that's what we're going to get together and talk about today. So uh, I'm glad y'all are here. Welcome. And uh, we hope you enjoy today's worship service. Before we get started with worship, I do have several important announcements to share with you. And so uh, I'm going to let you know about the work that the SPRC has been doing. Staff Parish Relations Committee here at St. Luke. Uh, we've got a couple of new positions uh, that have been filled okay so we're going to celebrate that today we have our intersection worship leader uh, i'm ready to name that person to you uh, i told the intersection this morning already but we have hired susan cumby some of you may know her uh, or her husband they're from town here in wahala she plays the keys the keyboard the piano and uh, she uh, she's looking forward to coming on for the intersection worship leader position in uh, August, August 14th. So that's her starting date. And then you know that we've been looking for a secretary or an administrative assistant uh, to uh, take Connie's place. And so I'm happy to be able to share with you today that our SPRC committee has discerned that next person and her name you know is Tanya Watson. Tanya Watson, so we are hiring Tanya on to that position and she will start uh, fourth and fifth. She's actually already kind of started. So she is taking lessons from Connie are just uh, kind of doing the work alongside her and learning the learning the routine right now. So we're grateful to be able to name those two persons for you today. Uh, the SPRC has worked really hard and I think they're looking uh, for a break. So um, I hope they're able to get that before we get started with um, with church conference season, which will be here before we know it. Be here before we know it. A couple other announcements that I wanted to mention to you today. No youth tonight, but we do have um, uh, uh, we have children uh, kids crew that are going to get together at two o'clock this afternoon. We're going to go on a little hike to Riley Moore Falls. We will start here and carpool if we need to to that location, do that little hike. If you guys want to come with, you can. We plan to do some swimming and stuff. Maybe uh, if you want to wear a swimsuit underneath your hiking clothes, then we'll do our swimming thing and then, uh, and then then we'll be done. So I think it'll be more like two hours instead of one, but that's going to start this afternoon at two o'clock. All are welcome to come and join with us for that children's ministries event. I think that's everything. Um, so we will uh, just say the beautiful flowers on the altar today are given by Phil and Phyllis Phillips, honor of their granddaughter, Grayson's ninth birthday. So grateful for the flowers. And we are going to start with worship today uh, by singing a Christmas hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful. It is on page 234. I invite you to stand and sing with me.
Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, and as you're still turned to 234 in your hymnals, you can look at verse 2 and know what I'm going to preach about later, okay? You can look at verse 2 and know what I'm going to preach about. All right, we're going to join in this prayer of John Calvin uh, in our opening prayer together now. I invite you to pray with me uh, this prayer. Let's pray together. Strong covenant God, save us from being self-centered in our prayers and teach us to remember to pray for others. May we be so bound up in love with those for whom we pray that we may feel their needs as acutely as our own and intercede for them with sensitiveness, with understanding, and with imagination. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Let's affirm our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let's worship God now with God's tithes and our offerings this morning. children who are present uh, to come up with Miss Janie. She's going to share with us a children's sermon this morning. Good morning. Good morning. So this morning we were talking about reflection, right? We were talking about light and how it reflects. And we talked about why we see our where reflection in the mirror. And why is that, Logan? Yeah, so because of the light, we see our reflection. So I want, Charlie, come here. Come look at your reflection in the mirror. Tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. You see yourself? Okay. 
All right. I don't think yourself is there. Look, I want you to look again, okay? But turn around real quick, okay? All right, I want you to look again. Look deeper, because I don't think you saw it the first time. What do you see now? What do you see? Jesus. You see Jesus. That's right. You gotta look deep. You gotta look deep in that reflection. And so see, that's what Jesus wants us to see. When you, when you look in the mirror, he wants you to see him. He wants you to see um, doing good for others and all of those types of things. He wants you to reflect the light. Um, and he wants you to reflect the light of Jesus Christ, okay? Um, it makes me think about Christmas time when we see these Christmas lights. And what do you guys see those lights like? They're reflecting, and, and they're bouncing off, and you see all these different lights all around. So it's a good time to help remind us, you know, at the, kind of at the halfway point throughout the year of Jesus' birth and um, the real reason of, of why, we, why we celebrate Jesus and why we are called to be Christians and, and spread his word. Okay? Does anyone want to say a prayer? Logan, do you want to say a prayer for us today? Thanks. Lord, thank you for giving yourself up, even though it's still summer. Thank you for doing that at Christmas time. Lord, thank you for giving us Christmas and Christmas at summer too. And thank you for all you've done. Amen. our worship service this morning. Uh, we're going to turn to John for some special music. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior. special music today. Um, I gotta say I'm catching up too because we are in July 
and we are singing the December Christmas stuff. So, yeah, it's going to take some processing, but uh, this is joyful to, to be able to proclaim the birth of the Christ child uh, today here in the middle of July. As we come to a time of prayer, dear friends, I want to let you know uh, that there are actually prayer concerns listed in your bulletins now. They're at the bottom right-hand section of the inside of your trifold bulletin. So they're down here in the bottom corner. Uh, and so as we go to a time of prayer, I hope that uh, you will you know, pray with me for those names that are listed. Remember Jan Campbell today? And, and especially Charles and Doris, you know, that's a family unit. And uh, with Jan uh, undergoing some medical difficulties, it has put a little bit of strain on them uh, to be able to run their family like they usually do. So just be prayerful for that family along with me. Uh, Stephanie is here today. We're grateful for her presence again this week. Bob is still over in Colorado and so uh, I think they're planning to, to, to get Bob home on this coming Saturday. Just remember them in your prayers as they're still making a lot of those transitions. Also, if you would remember Adrienne Lynn, she's on our prayer concern list too. Uh, this is uh, Chris and Gary Blaylock's daughter. She is uh, getting ready to have a baby. And so if uh, they've asked us to be prayerful for her and for the family as that process uh, gets closer and closer, the due date is, um, I think, still about a week and a half away. Uh, but as they get closer, they get uh, even more and more anxious and excited. So uh, just be prayerful for Adrian and that family as they get ready to welcome uh, a new grandchild. And then if you would uh, remember Jean Phillips in your prayers, uh, she, I told you, I think last week, uh, she usually resides over at the residences in Seneca. They have moved her to Lila Doyle. She remains at Lila Doyle right now. Uh, she continues to try to get a little bit better so they can move her back to the residences. Uh, there's some confusion <coughs> with that for her. And there's, uh, you know, some adjustment, new place, different kind of <coughs> location, all that. So if you just uh, remember her in your prayers, remember Robert and Richard and Vicki as they're uh, going to visit with her on a regular basis. I know they all appreciate your prayers. Um, and then if you continue to remember Matt Roper, I wanted to tell you, it's kind of a praise report. Uh, I was able to go see him this past week and man, when I walked in the room, he's sitting up in his chair. Lewis and Susan are there. Michaela is there. They're getting ready to eat. And Matt's talking about being excited about eating. He has a great appetite. Uh, sitting up in his chair. I mean, it's just really a lot of good steps in the right direction for him. For those of you who might not know, we've been praying for Matt uh, for quite a while now. He was struck by a vehicle while walking on the side of the road. He had some head trauma from that injury, uh, and he's come a long way since where he started. Uh, and so we just continue to trace that progress and continue to pray for Matt and family. I know that you have prayer concerns, and like I say each week, hope you'll write those down on a sheet of paper, hand them to me, put them on a table back here, place them in an offering plate, let me know what those prayer concerns are so that we can put them in the prayer concern list and so that I can join you in praying each week. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Emmanuel, God with us. As we come to you in prayer today, we're grateful for who you are to us on a constant basis. Lord, you revealed yourself most clearly to us by sending your son Jesus into this world to uh, not only be born, but then uh, to, to teach us, to show us uh, the greatness of the kingdom uh, of God. And so we're grateful to have that glimpse through uh, Jesus' work in this world of, of who you are, Father, and what you are calling us to be, who you are calling us to be as your people uh, in the here and now. Lord, we pray that you would continue to, to uh, work that plan out, work your will out in and among us that uh, we would be able to shine the light which you uh, have given for us to shine. Uh, we reflect Jesus 
And when we reflect Jesus, we shine the light that you're calling us to shine as best as we can. Lead us to look to Jesus as our forerunner, as our pioneer of the faith, as our example to imitate. And as we take on Christ's likeness, may the world be changed for the love of God, not only for us, but for all who will receive it. I believe that that is a certain beauty that we can learn from the scripture passage that we're about to read. And so as, uh, as we dive into the meaning of that scripture passage for us today, I pray you'd guide us and lead us, Lord. We pray uh, this prayer as your disciples seeking to live into the life and love that Jesus has given for us to live into. Lead us to be transformative, not only for the sake of others, and not only for the sake of our own transformation, but for the glory of God. And then, Lord, we pray that uh, you would receive that glory into who you are in connection with us. We pray this prayer uh, as your disciples, and we seek to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, uh, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, we're going to sing another hymn together. We're going to sing Joy to the World. It's on page 240, 46 in your hymnals. We'll stand and sing this hymn together this morning. Good singing. You may be seated. I invite you to turn with me now in your Bibles as we join together in our scripture lesson for today, which comes from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 28. So we will continue the series out of Colossians 
that we began last week uh, today. So last week, we started in the very first part of the first chapter of Colossians. We focused in on the, the thanks uh, uh, that God calls us to, the gratefulness that God calls us to as God's people. And then through that vein, we learned that God is calling us uh, to increase in the knowledge that God gives us as God's people. And so today we're going to learn about how God is accomplishing God's plan through the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ our Lord, who reigns supreme, Paul and Timothy tell us in this text. And so listen for the word of the Lord to us today and how that impacts who we are uh, as uh, we read this scripture passage together. Starting in verse 15. Jesus, Jesus Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in Him, all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through Him and for Him. He Himself is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So before we learn the firstborn of all creation, and here in verse 18, Jesus, the firstborn from the dead, so that He might come to have first place in everything. For in Him all the fullness of God was pleased to to dwell, and through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before Him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope that we talked about last week promised by the gospel that you heard, which, you, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's affliction for, afflictions for the sake of His body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the Word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to His saints." To them, God chose to make, to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is He whom, he, whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray again together. Lord, speak. Your servants are listening. We invite Your Spirit to come and guide us in these few minutes that we share with one another. Open our ears to hear the Word that You are going to send us. Open our hearts to receive it. Open my, my mouth to speak it. And we pray, God, that as we're transformed by it, we would be prepared to go out into the world, to change the world by Your power at work within us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today we're going to focus on the image of God. Before we do that, i got to ask this question. It is the middle of July, but does anybody out there have their Christmas lights still on your porch from last Christmas? No? No? Oh, okay. Just me. Just me. Okay. Hey, yeah. We still have a tree up. Hey, you still got a tree. That's right. Art and Marilyn still have their tree up from, from last Christmas. So there's, there's some hope. There's some hope for my message for today. You know, there is this um, 
expectation out there, isn't there? And I kind of remind you of this I'm probably every, every year when it's Christmas time. There's this expectation that you, if you're a dutiful, responsible person, you'll have your Christmas lights down and put away by New Year's, right? That's the way it works. But that's actually not even respectful of the 12 days of Christmas, which start on December the 25th. So if you go 12 days, you got to at least leave your lights up through the 1st of January. And if you extend that just a little bit, then you're like me and you still got your Christmas lights up here in the middle of July. Right? Maybe not. Maybe so. The point that I want you to focus on today is that that light which we gain as followers of this Christian way, which we remember maybe at one of its best moments at Christmas time, is something that we're not supposed to put under a bushel basket. It's a light that we're, we're called by God to shine, not just every week, but every day of every year as followers of Jesus. This light which was born in the person and work of Jesus Christ our Lord is carried on in us, in our hearts, even in the here and now, so that we are called as followers of Christ to shine that light for the sake of the world's transformation every single day. That's not even what I'm going to talk about today, but you got that for free, okay? You got that for free. In our scripture passage for today in Colossians, Paul and Timothy are arguing something very specific. They want you to identify the, the co-eternal reality of God the Father and of God the Son. That's what they're doing. Okay, I know those are big words, but let me say it again, that Paul and Timothy are wanting you to understand the co-eternal reality of God the Father and God the Son well before the foundation of the world or the universe as we have come to know it. What they're trying to argue is that God before all time, that God was three persons, okay? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That Spirit which sweeps over the waters of creation as we recount in the story of creation from Genesis 1 and 2. That same Spirit is present with the Father and the Son at creation. And here in Colossians, we get to see how Paul and Timothy want us to understand how the Son is at work in the creation. So that what the Father speaks to life, the Son creatively brings to life by what He carries out through His work. This agent with God in creation. This is the kind of mind frame, framework, that Paul and Timothy want us to have as we read this text. But he goes further from there. That hope and that faith that we can have from this Christ child that we're learning about, this second person of the Trinity, this, this agent of creation. Well, he's the perfect representation of the image of God for us. Jesus is the perfect representation of the image of God for us. What's more, if we go back to those first few chapters of Genesis, we can recount that we ourselves were created in this Imago Dei, this image of God. Imago Dei, that's the title of today's message. It's just the Latin version of the image of God. That's what, if we want to speak Latin, Imago Dei means image of God. And what we learn from those first chapters of Genesis, to repeat, is that we ourselves were created in this image of God. Just like Jesus is the perfect representation of the image of God, we too have a bountiful duty and responsibility that has been put on us by God, our Creator, our Sustainer, our Redeemer. This God has put the image of God in us. Here's the thing, and it goes back to Janie's children's message for today. We can't do this work on our own. We have a pioneer and a perfecter 
of the faith which has run the race before us, to use the language in the book of Hebrews. A pioneer and a perfecter of our faith, which is running this race before us and who shines his light so that all we have to do, friends, is reflect. All we have to do is reflect. So if you want to know which step to take, which way to go, you simply look to Jesus and see what He teaches, what He shows us. And when we look to Jesus and see what He teaches, what He shows us, we have enough there to make any decision that comes before us. Moral decisions, personal decisions, societal decisions, what I need to vote for on the ballot, what I need to say to my coworker so that they can understand the perspective I'm coming from, what I need to say to my biological sister or my biological brother so that they can understand my view, but also understand that I understand theirs. Through this vein of the love of Jesus for us and for the whole world. This creative power of Jesus is intended to impact the world universally. I hope you heard that in the text we read. It's meant to impact the world universally. That's good news. And it's good news because it means something very specific for us. It means that what happens for us as church is not contained to the four walls of this church sanctuary. It's not contained just to here. It's meant to exude the walls of this church sanctuary. It's meant to go out into the community around us when what happens? When we go out into the community uh, uh, around us. It's meant to pervade those barriers too. It's meant to go into the state, into the nation, into the whole world as God's Spirit directs us to show that light which is shining to us and then reflecting, reflecting to the world around us. Jesus is that light. We are simply reflectors of that light which is shining from Jesus. And we have this bountiful duty, this bountiful responsibility to show the world what comes next. Listen, I I had a fun time with my family yesterday, and I'm actually going to end here. So maybe it'll be a shorter sermon. We'll get out of here soon. Now, I'm not done yet. I could take 20 minutes with this. You never know with me, okay? All right, but we went to this... uh, We went to this wayside place yesterday. Maybe some of you know about it. I'll ask you. So in between Salem and Sunset, off of Highway 11, where um, uh, there's a little river right there. Okay, there's a little river. And it's right off the roadway on Highway 11. Uh, There's a little bit of a gradual waterfall at this place. It's right off the roadway. I hope you've been there before. See if I've been there before. You know what I'm talking about? There are some of you who have been there before. It's a pretty popular place, okay? If you haven't seen it, the ride itself is worth it because there are beautiful views of the mountains on the way. And then once you get to the river, it's fun to just sit by the river and enjoy the people and the place. Okay, so there are several things that you can do while you're here. You can, you, can sit by the, you can sit by the river. That's what a lot of people do. They just sit there. They might have a soda or have a picnic or just like to watch the people who are there or listen to the river flow. That's good enough for me. But I have children, okay? So we do all the things, okay? One of the things that people do is uh, there's like this gradual sloping uh, water slide, natural, not put in by humans, okay? This is God's natural water slide that's here at this place and lots of people bring their floats and they ride down this natural water slide my kids and me didn't have floats so we just rode down the natural water slide uh just us we took some pictures some videos you can go on facebook see all this okay and then and then we just kind of hung out in the river it was nice to be able to be there but the main attraction main attraction is this i'm gonna say it's about 20 to 25 foot cliff Okay, and people jump off of this cliff. 
into the river below, okay? They jump off of this cliff. We watched, I'm going to say, almost 50 people do this yesterday while we were at the river, okay? My wife is bold. I don't have to tell you that for you to know that my wife is bold. She's probably one of the most courageous people that I know, okay? And so here's her idea. If they can do it, I can do it. And so we watch for a while and we see how they're doing it. And then she says, okay, this is the spot I'm going to jump. Everybody who's jumped here hasn't gotten hurt. So I'm going to jump in this spot too. And I'm going to just see what happens. Well, she does it. We took a video. It was great. I was so proud of her. It wasn't long after she did it, she started saying, Kevin, I bet you can't. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you're probably right, but I bet I can. I bet I can't. There's only too many times that your wife can say she bet you can't before you finally say, you know, the only way for her to stop telling me that is if I get up there and do it myself. So she told me when I finally decided I was going to do it, she said, well, now, wait a minute. I'm just telling you, you can't go to the edge and look down. If you do that, you're going to be like all the people who look over the edge, look down, and turn around and go back down the hill without jumping off. You just have to decide and do it. It was good advice, good advice. Because I got to the edge of that thing, not quite to the edge, let's see. I was probably about right here, okay? And the edge of the cliff is right there at the end of the altar railing, all right? And I said, it's either now or never. Because if I take another step up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get too afraid, I'm gonna have to turn back around. But I conquered that fear, I stepped over the cliff, and I jumped into the water, okay? Here's the point that I want you to get. Logan saw me. Logan saw me. Logan saw his mother. Logan saw his mother. And it wasn't long before he came up to me and he said, Dad, I'd be really nervous, but I think I can do it too. And I said, yeah, Logan, you can. You can do this. You can get up there. You can jump from that cliff. We know we showed you exactly where you can land. It's safe to land there. You can jump from this 20-foot high cliff if you want to do it. And he said, Dad, I think I want to do it. I'll go up there with you. So I'll walk him up the cliff. We're at the top. We're sitting there. And he says, wow, I'm really nervous. And I said, man, you don't even know what nervousness is. You being in this spot and me being in this spot. I want you to know how nervous I am. But listen, son, you can. I am with you, and you can do it. If you want to do it, you can do it. And he said, I still I think I want to do it. I'm nervous, but I think I want to do it. And I told him the thing that Janie told me. I said, don't get too close to the edge, okay? We're right here. This is good enough. When you're ready, just take two steps and jump. He did it. It's on Facebook. It's on Facebook. His mama was at the bottom. I was at the top. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I couldn't believe that he got enough courage to do this because it really is. I mean, it's this, this, this brown barrier at the top. right? That's how far this drop is into the water. It's pretty intense, okay? But he did it. He did it. You know what I want to tell you today? Somebody's watching you, friends. Somebody is watching you. Somebody is watching you. They're looking to you as a pioneer of their faith. You know how much faith and risk was balled up into that moment for my oldest 11-year-old son yesterday? There was so much faith and risk balled up into that <laughs> moment, and it's up to us to show them that it's possible. There's a lot of talk about generational Christianity right now. I don't know if you keep up with the talk and in the Christian circles now, podcasts, books are being written, people are writing stuff online constantly about how we're becoming a generational church. Here's the thing. For me, it's always like a relay race. You're running a race, and it's almost time for us to pass that baton off to that next generation where they're going to take that baton and pass it off 
to the next generation and to the next generation. This is God's way. We're a part of this movement of God, which came when Jesus Christ was sent to this world to a manger in Bethlehem to grow up, to teach us, to show us of this kingdom of God that we ourselves are called to reflect to the world in the here and now. We can't skip a generation. We cannot skip a generation. We have to be sure to pass off this baton to the next runner in the race. It's on us. It's our responsibility to do this most important work. And listen, somebody's already watching you. Somebody is already watching you. They're looking to your example to be that which is reflecting Jesus' example. How are we going to reflect the light and the hope and the love and the faith of Jesus Christ in our actions today and tomorrow, in our decisions today and tomorrow, in our words today and tomorrow? How are we going to reflect the light of Jesus at work in us? Let's pray together. Lord God, we know that you call us to risk. You call us to faith. You call us to boldness and to courage. Not because of anything we're capable of, but because of what you are capable of in and through us. Lead us to claim this hymn of boldness for ourselves from Colossians today. Lead us to claim it for us, then lead us to live out the light of Jesus Christ throughout the land today, tomorrow, and all our days. Until people hear, until this community hears of the goodness of Jesus Christ until the people of this state hear of the goodness of Jesus Christ, of that light which is shining through in and through us, until this nation, until this world hear of the goodness of the light of Jesus Christ shining in and through us. We know that this is a gift that we're called to receive. We know also, God, that it is a gift that we're called to share this image of the living, uh, of the living God at work in us. So lead us, God to live out this image, to live out this light, to keep on shining our Christmas lights. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, friends. The best news today is that because of God's image at work within us, all people, all people have worth and dignity. And we're called to mirror that uh, from Jesus' light shining through us today. All right, we're going to sing another Christmas hymn uh, before we end things out today. O come, O come, God with us, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel. It is on page uh, 211 in your hymnals. I invite you uh, to stand and sing along with me this hymn.
by name, the uh, intersection worship leader that is on her way, Susan Cumbie, and remember by name our new secretary administrative assistant, Tanya Watson, as they both prepare to join us in the next few weeks here at St. Luke. Remember them in your prayers, remember them in your thoughts, and pray that God would continue to encourage and uh, direct their path forward as, uh, as they're here uh, to invest their gifts with us. Here's what I wanna say. I'm grateful to be with you during this time. And I also want to say that I do believe that we're on the precipice of something new in the life of God's church today. I think we are already paving the path forward for wherever God is going to lead God's church for decades to come. I believe that your faithfulness and commitment to the church has never been more important than it is right now. I believe that you choosing to invest your gifts has never been more important than it is right now. We are called to reflect the light of the Son of God together, and there's never been a more important moment to do that than right now. Receive the blessings that are yours in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Take those blessings with you. Keep your hands and your hearts and your minds open and allow God's Spirit to use you to share those blessings with the whole world. In Jesus' name, amen.